This is probably the most boy thing that we've ever had on the show. Why do you guys do this? <laughs> this is Sports Center. Hey, I'm Marissa Roberto, and the grass definitely is not greener in Edmonton. As the Green and Gold extended their home losing streak to a mind blowing 20 games, the Elks lost 37 29 to the Tie Cats. That came in with only one win themselves this season. Hamilton also started a backup QB and lost that backup QB to injury in the third quarter. But it's not hard to see why the Elks are struggling when they're making plays like this. The quarterback right where that linebacker was. Ooh, There's ooh, Cornelius. Ooh, ooh. In trouble, oh, trying God. to get away. He will not. Oh, what is he doing? What is he doing? He throws it away. It's picked up and brought back by Captain Todd. It's touchdown, Hamilton. What is happening? The Ticats strike oof, again. Oof. This is one of those Seinfeld moments where you cry and then you cry again. Ugh, poor Edmonton fans. The loss sees them tie a dubious record, joining the old St. Louis Browns of Major League Baseball as the only teams in the big four North American pro sports to ever lose 20 straight home games. The Browns finished that season 54 and 100 and moved the following year to Baltimore to become the Orioles we know now. Edmonton's loss also dropped them to 0-6 on the season, which is their worst start in franchise history. Man, just can't catch a break out there. They've now lost 10 straight games overall, dating back to last season, with their last win coming in week 15 last year against the Riders. So I guess thanks Saskatchewan, you gave them one. When their last home win came way back in October 12th of 2019. That's right, before the pandemic and before changing their team name. So they still technically have not won a home game as the Elves. And as we mentioned yesterday, the streak could get uglier. As their next home games come against BC and Winnipeg, the two best teams in the West. All right, we've got a huge matchup in the East tonight as the Argos are taking on Montreal. Heading into this matchup, the Argos are undefeated and the Owls have not lost against Eastern teams. With Hamilton's win last night, a Montreal loss would also mean they are tied with the Ticats for second in the division. Despite playing two fewer games than the leaders in this category, the Argos are third in the CFL in points for and have allowed the fewest points too. They are also first in some major categories like sacks allowed, turnovers forced, interceptions, rushing yards, and rushing touchdowns. Simply put, this is a huge test for the Owls, but they have shown they are more than capable of winning this game. On offense, Austin Mack and Kayon Julian Grant are the best wide receiver duo in the league. Both are in the top three in receiving yards and 30 plus yard catches, and in the top five in yards after the catch. And defensively, the Owls have allowed just six touchdowns, which is tied for the fewest in the league. <laughs> Time now for my favorite segment and yours, Why We Love Sports Today. Why We Love Sports Today. Now at the top of the show, we showed you an epic wipeout. And we like to keep things consistent around here. So as much as I'd hate to quote DJ Khaled in any scenario, he would call this another one. Another one. Drake's It's All a Blur Tour makes his first Canadian stop tonight at Bell Centre in Montreal. But we're hoping fans will be a little less enthusiastic than they were in Boston this week. When Jersey announced Celtic superstar Jason Tatum was joining him on stage. On that note, I got my brother Jason Tatum with me on this video. Oh, oh my. Oh. <laughs> Another one. How did that even happen? I don't understand. I'm like, Daddy, chill. What the hell? What the hell? Novak Djokovic's quest to complete just his seventh calendar slam in tennis history with another dominant victory over Yannick Sinner early this morning. Joker's 46th career Grand Slam semi was a cakewalk for the men's all-time Grand Slam leader, as he dispatched of the eighth seeded Sinner in straight sets. And Joker continues to age like a fine wine. He becomes just the fourth man to reach five straight Wimbledon finals, and the win gives him a golden opportunity to tie Roger Federer's record for the most Wimbledon titles by any man Sunday. An eighth title at the All England Club would see him extend his lead atop the men's all-time Grand Slam leaderboard and tie Margaret Court for the most slams won by any male or female. As previously mentioned, a true calendar slam has only been accomplished six times, three times by men and three by women. Steffi Graf was the last to do so back in 1988, while Rod Laver was the only person to accomplish the feat twice. The only player standing in his way is world number one Carlos Alcaraz. They'll meet in the rematch of the Roland Garros semi-final, which saw Alcaraz lose after cramping up mid-match. You can catch the men's final Sunday morning live at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific on TSN. Meanwhile, the women's final goes tomorrow as last year's runner-up Andre Boer takes on Marketa Vondrasova at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific on TSN. <laughs> we are just two sleeps away from one of the most exciting events on the Canadian racing calendar, with a Honda Indy set for Sunday on the streets of downtown Toronto. To get us all set for the big race, we're bringing in our racing expert, Lucas Wacker, 
who will be at the track all weekend. Lucas, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Marissa. Great to be back at another race in another month. Looking forward to this one. Scott Dixon is the reigning champ and has won this event four times in his career. But it's his teammate that comes in as the odds maker's favorite. How realistic is a fifth title in Toronto for Dixon? Yeah, like you just mentioned there, Scott Dixon is the mayor of Toronto. When it comes to this street city circuit, he knows how to get around here the best. He's got three consecutive podium finishes here, dating back to 2017, but of course we missed the 2020 and 2021 races here due to the pandemic, but he's still in a row here nonetheless. And the track hasn't changed much since then. Maybe there's a little bit more wear and tear on the old Toronto streets, but when I look at his teammate, Alex Blow, he's probably his biggest competitor here this weekend. And Polo is on a roll in and of itself. I mean, this is unbelievable what the number 10 driver is doing here. He's won four of the last five races on the IndyCar season circuit, and he's going for four in a row here this weekend. It would make IndyCar history. It would tie the all-time record with Sebastian Bourdais, who set it back in 2006 with four wins in a row for himself. Look for those two to be leading the charge here come Sunday, and maybe even qualifying as well here on Saturday. And we're putting you on the spot. Who do you think crosses the finish line first on Sunday? Ah, you're putting me on the spot here, Marissa. This is a tough call because there are a lot of guys that jump off the page that really could go out there and win this weekend when you look at the grid and who's coming here to Toronto this weekend. Number one, I'm going to go with Alex Bolt, the guy I just talked about. He's a guy that you're going to have to watch out for, of course, and compete against on Sunday. He's on a roll. Confidence is so key in motorsports, and that guy definitely has it right now. Second, I'll give it to Pato Award. When I'm walking around here, the guy is the life of the party. It seems like he has so much energy, and it's bottled up, and he's ready to go here on the track on Sunday. And I think he can go out there and execute, maybe get a win here this weekend. And then last but not least, I'm looking at Scott McLaughlin. This is a guy that has a tremendous amount of history on street circuits, dating back to his V8 supercar days down in Australia and New Zealand. He's another guy. So I'm going with three drivers from three different teams. So you, just, you definitely need to watch out for. But at the end of the day, the fans are winning this race because it's going to be an incredible show that they're going to put on. And I can't wait to see who comes out on top on the podium on Sunday. Lucas, thanks again. Enjoy the race. Thank you, Marissa. Enjoy the race this weekend. And you can catch the Honda Indy live Sunday on TSN. Our coverage begins at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> Ever since my PokerStars trip to Monaco to play in a PokerStars tournament, I've been a little addicted to the game itself. And because of that, I want my friends to also be into poker so we can have poker tournaments, a couple of poker parties. I got this nice set of chips. Anyway, I've been all about poker lately. So if you happen to be into poker too and you want your friends to get into it, here are three easy steps you can do to get your friends to play poker with you. First, just tell your friends you're having a party. You don't tell them it's a poker party. Just tell them you're having a little get together. Come on over. You'll have snacks, you'll have food, you'll have drinks. Step two, hire a poker dealer and rent a legitimate poker table, okay? You wanna set the scene and you wanna make sure somebody is there guiding everybody along. Because if they've never played before, they'll need a little help. Because really, that's all you need. That's like, that's literally all you need to do. Cause uh, like, that, that's, that's literally it. And step three, make it a small buy-in. Just like a really easy peasy bet, maybe 10 bucks, maybe five even, just to get the ball rolling. That's all it takes because poker is that fun. You don't need anything more than that, okay? Just easy peasy. Now all my friends are into poker and now we're gonna have other poker parties. It's gonna be a time. Maybe you wanna come too, let me know. Hit me up if you're into poker, we could play. That's all for today. I will not be here Monday, I'll be traveling, but I will join you on Tuesday, down under. See you there.